Hey guys, Pete here. Welcome back to the first detailed video on how to build a route for CNC machine. In this video, we're going to go about how to assemble one of the carriages. Hope you enjoy. The first thing you're going to need is an M8 by 25 millimeter long bolt. Each carriage has four of these. Inserting the bolt into the carriage is easy. All you've got to do is line up the flats on the hex heads and the hole and push it in. It's going to be a snug fit so you might have to push quite hard. What makes Route 4 CNC so cheap to build is the fact it uses 6 or 8 roller skate bearings that can be found anywhere. To insert the 6 or 8 bearings you need to add an M8 washer followed by the bearing followed by another washer and then a lock tight nut. In total, to assemble the bearings to the carriages, you're going to need 32 M8 by 25mm long hex head bolts, 64 M8 washers, 32 M8 lock nuts and some M4 nuts and I'll come on to that later in the video. You'll also need 32 608 bearings. It will be worth noting that this design is common between Route 3 and Route 4 albeit Route 4 is slightly bigger. So what you see here will be applicable to the Route 3 CNC as well as the Route 4 CNC designs. It's recommended that you use lock nuts to secure the bolts down as this could vibrate and we don't want these nuts coming loose. The amount of torque required to secure these nuts down isn't defined, yet I like to ensure they're fairly tight so they're not going to come loose. You'll be able to see from the video how much effort I put into the spanner. The carriages comes in two variants, a coach bolt variant and a standard variant. Coach bolts are used instead of standard bolts as these do not require a tool to secure down. They have a square shank on them that fits within the 3D printed parts so you only have to tighten the nut down to them. I seem to have a surplus supply of M8 coach bolts so I prefer to use these. Although it's worth noting if you do you might have to file some of the sides down. If not, don't worry, use a standard M8 bolt instead. Just remember to put an M8 washer on first. You might remember at the start of the video I mentioned the need for M4 nuts. This is where they're needed. As you can see the coach bolt covers the entranceway for the M4 nuts to be inserted. I forgot and I had to later disassemble the machine to insert them. Don't forget, please add them now. To connect the two carriages together you're going to need the following. An M8 coach bolt or standard bolt with a length of 100mm. 16 in total. An M8 washer, you're going to need 48 or 52 depending if you're using a coach bolt or a standard bolt and 48 M8 standard nuts. I'll speed through this section of the video of me installing the coach bolts and nuts. You're now seeing me add nuts and washers to the in-betweens of the two carriages. This is so I can fix it down securely. It's easier to tighten the two bolts against one another than just sandwiching the two carriages together. This will ensure that the blocks won't vibrate loose over time and they're tightened against one another. As before there's no torque settings for these nuts but you'll be able to see how much effort I put into tightening them down. 
You want to ensure that these nuts are nice and tight though. Just a reminder, please don't forget to insert the M4 nuts into the four corners of the parts. Now's your last chance. You're going to need to produce four carriages with the bolt sticking out and four without. Repeat this process for the remaining carriage blocks. I'll fast forward this part of the video so you can see how I assemble the remaining carriages. You can now see I have four carriages without the coach bolts installed. And here are the remaining other four carriages with the coach bolts installed ready to be mated together. Next I'll show you how to connect the two carriage blocks together and calibrate it for the 40 by 40 millimeter steel box section. First you need to add a standard M8 nut to each corner of the part, followed by a standard M8 washer. Now here comes the tricky part of mating the two carriages together. It's somewhat tricky because the clearance holes on these 3D printed parts are fairly tight and snag on the threaded rod. Just be patient and a bit of force is required to get them two together. If like me you'll find that you can't get the carriage perfectly square to start off with, use the nuts and tighten them against the carriage. This way you can move the block up and down on each corner. Once you've got the carriage into place it's time to place some additional M8 washers followed by some standard M8 nuts on each four corners of the part. It's not critical that you use lock nuts here as we'll use the previously installed nuts on the threaded rod to tighten against so this will reduce any chances of vibrations causing the part to come loose. The additional nuts on these bolts will allow for some fine calibration to preload the bearing onto the box section. You'll see me do this later on in the video. This is what a completed carriage looks like. Repeat this four times for the remaining carriages. Now the carriage block is assembled, it's time to preload this against the steel box section. To do this, we're looking to get a snug fit between the bearing blocks and the box section without any slop or twisting. We go around the four corners diagonally and tighten them down until it feels just right. Once we've done that, we then use the opposing nuts to tighten against. It takes a bit of trial and error, but once done you should have a box section that doesn't twist or slop around between the two carriage blocks. Ensure all the nuts are correctly tightened and the carriage runs freely and smoothly along the box section.
You can see me putting the opposing nuts against the carriage block. This is so I can tighten it against. As you can see it takes a bit of trial and error to make sure the box section runs smoothly and sits snug within the carriage blocks. Take your time, go around the corners and make sure the nuts and bolts are correctly tightened. The carriage should run freely and consistently across the whole length of the box section. If you've got this far, congratulations, you've assembled a Route 3 or Route 4 carriage block and preloaded it against the box section. Repeat this four times for the remaining carriages. Thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. Keep me posted on any of your Route CNC builds you do, I love to see them. Please like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more detailed videos coming soon. Thanks, bye!